How's it going guys? Michael Shamlin here with another Milky Way processing tutorial. That's been a long time since I did my last one about, oh, if I can think here, maybe a year and a half, two years ago. And a lot has changed since then. A lot in Lightroom has changed. We've got some better noise reduction, some new features, and I thought it would be fun to do an updated Milky Way tutorial. We're going to start off here, and this image was taken in Joshua Tree with the Sony a7S camera system. It has quickly become my favorite camera for shooting the Milky Way and getting really crisp, clean images. Now we use the Nikon 14-24 to wide lens, which is also one of my favorite wide lenses for shooting the Milky Way. And the combination is just awesome. And as you can see here, I am shooting 12,800 ISO. Yes, you heard that correct, 12,800. And I'm producing here a pretty clean image if we go ahead and zoom in. You get a little bit of noise, but oh my gosh, it is just, it's outstanding. And if we go to the edges here, you can see the Nikon is doing a great job at keeping the edges really sharp. And we're not getting any coma or any soft edges here. It is just awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and start off here. When I used ISO 12,800, I have sort of overexposed the image, but with the dynamic range of the Sony, all we really have to do is bring that exposure down. And I think rather than shooting a lower ISO, like ISO 3200, and getting, you know, probably a standard exposure that we would normally have, I like to push the ISO higher and then bring down the exposure. I'm not sure why, but I actually find that my images come out a little bit cleaner. I'm not sure the technical reason behind that. I'm sure somebody else could describe it pretty well, but I don't. So I'm going to go ahead and take this first exposure slider, and I'm just going to bring this down. Let's try it, bringing it down one stop. That looks pretty good. Maybe even a little further. Let's do 1.5 stops. All right, there we go. So this is probably what you'd see if you shot ISO 3200. Let's zoom in, and yeah, it's, I mean, there's a tiny bit of grain, but it just looks awesome. Super clean image. So we shot this on auto white balance, I think, but in general, I like the images to be a little bit more magenta and a little bit more blue. So let's just apply a little bit more magenta. Let's go ahead and put this to 25. And as you can see, a little bit of that nice magenta is coming into the sky. And let's bring in just a little bit more of that blue color. Let's go to, I don't know, 3,900. See what this does. Oh, yep. And uh, that looks good for me. Now, normally what I do here is, is add some contrast. And, you know, we have the option of using the contrast slider. You can totally use the contrast slider. But for this first step, I'm just going to use the tonal curve because I find you have a little bit more control. So the way you use the tonal curve is to either decrease the steepness of the curve to get rid of contrast or steepen the curve to add more contrast. And how we do that is we add two different points. Now the first point we're going to add is down here and just drag that down a little bit. And as you can see, as we drag it down, we actually decrease the exposure. But when we add a new point up here and drag that up, we're increasing the exposure just in the highlights and adding more contrast. So I like the way that looks. Now this area in here has become a little too bright and the shadows have become, well, a little too dark. So what we can do here is use these sliders in here and kind of neutralize that or, or get rid of a little bit of the brightness and the darkness. So I'm going to take the highlight slider, bring that down a little bit, and that pushes through even a little bit of that light pollution. You can bring it all the way down and really uh, hammer out that light pollution, but I think that looks a little unnatural for my taste. So I'm just going to go and apply it maybe maybe to 40 and what I like to do is use both the shadows and the black slider now the black slider does better at basically affecting the ultimate you know shadows in the image and I find that sometimes the black slider won't give you as much haloing around the edges that the shadow slider does but I like to use them both so you know, the best thing to do with any of these sliders is to just move them around and see what they do. You know, apply them all the way, all the way down, see what that does, and then what I'd do. So I'd go over to the shadow slider, bring that all the way down, 
bring that all the way up, see what that does, and then see kind of what works for the image. But for this one, I know I'm going to want a little bit of the black slider. And I'm going to want a little bit of that shadow slider to really bring out these shadows in the foreground. Now, I'm not really going to mess too much with the white slider. I think that's fine where it is. In general, I don't really touch the clarity slider unless I am selectively adding clarity to a certain spot. It's just my own personal preference, but I'll, I'll just show you really quick. If you wanted to kind of make the image a little more dreamy, you can decrease the clarity slider. If you want to add more tonal contrast, you increase it. Now remember, you're going to get haloing if you increase the clarity slider. You're going to get haloing around the edges. If we zoom in here, you can see there's this crazy white banding that's going on around the areas of tonal contrast. So make sure to be careful with the clarity slider. I frankly just leave it at zero. Now the vibrant slider, I, I do like a vibrant sky. I like a little bit more color. So maybe I'm going to bring that up a little bit. Bring that to 25. I'm going to kind of ignore these two um, drop down menus. I don't really need split toning. I don't really need to affect the colors too much. I mean, we've already done our color shifts and color balance. So, you know, we're going to go straight to detail. And one of the most important tools in Milky Way processing, in my opinion, is the noise reduction. Now, with a camera like this, you're not getting a whole lot of noise, so we don't even need to apply much of it. But, you know, if you're using a Canon 6D or something that's not quite as good in low light, you definitely want to apply a good amount of noise reduction. And I find with those cameras, around 40 or 30 to 45% works great. For this one, I'm going to put 25. And as you can see, you get rid of a little bit of the detail but it really does just eradicate all the noise in the image. And if you find you have color banding in the noise, it's good to apply this color noise right here. When you get red color shifts in the shadows or like a weird green banding, uh, you can sort of get rid of that using the color slider. We don't need it in this case though. There's a new feature here, which I think is pretty cool. And it's called dehaze. It's a new feature, it was just released pretty recently, and a lot of people are talking about it. It is awesome for daytime shots. I've tested it out with some of my hazy images. You know, you get that crazy haze, or maybe there's like a lot of pollution in the air in a certain city, and you can really crank this dehaze filter, and it just brings back all the detail. And I've found, actually, it has a pretty cool application for even night sky images. Now, if I wanted to add more of a dreamy look to the image, I, I wanted to make it look like it was just a dream and really ethereal, I could decrease this uh, dehaze slider, and it adds kind of an interesting effect. Now, the only thing is it brings in more warmth to the image. So what you'd need to do is you'd need to go back to the white balance and make the image more blue to color correct it. But I think it's pretty cool it kind of just creates this really dreamy look. It, it, it doesn't look like it's really added any noise at all, but I, I can see myself using this for some images. Now, in this case, if we bring the dehaze slider up, we can actually increase a little bit of contrast in the Milky Way as well and get just a little bit more color. So let's go ahead and just use it at 15%. Now, what it did is we, we brought the slider this way and it actually added more blue to the image. So still, even bringing the dehaze slider up, we are going to need to go through and we're going to need to correct that. So I'm going to bring just a little bit more warmth into the image. I think that's pretty good. So let's go ahead and see what we did there. There's where we were before. Yeah, you can kind of add a little bit more contrast in there. And we're going to add even a little bit more contrast than that into the Milky Way, but we'll do that later with some selective brushing. I may even make this just a little bit more blue, I think. Let's do 4,000. Yep, all right. So what I always like to do is halfway through processing, I like to just take a break and kind of look at the image. So what do we want to do to this image? What would we like to change? Now, I want to keep the 
Joshua Tree is pretty silhouetted. I like that they're very dark against the night sky. I think it'd be good to add a little bit more contrast into the Milky Way, maybe add a slight vignette into the sky. And I think adding just a touch more kind of haziness or something to just the horizon, not the Milky Way or any other areas of the image. So let's use some tools here, some more selective tools to get what we want out of this image. Now the first thing I'm going to use is the radial filter. Uh, it's kind of like a radial gradient in Photoshop. Now the way we use these filters is usually to click and drag. And for the radial filter we just click on this filter right here. It'll bring up these sliders. Now, the first thing we do is we figure out where we want the radial filter to gradate from. Uh, it'll gradate out from the center of a point and it'll gradate from the center of these, this crosshair that we've got on the screen. Now let's say I wanted to make just the Milky Way bright and everything else dark. I would gradate from the Milky Way out. Now what I want in this case is I want just this area of the sky to have a vignette. So I'm going to go from this bottom area down here and I'm going to click and I'm going to drag. And as you can see, it's given me this kind of circle right here. And I can drag this out wherever I want. And I'm going to make it kind of this half circle to where I can darken just this area. What we can do here too is if, if you messed up your circle, you can drag this around. Or you can drag these points and change the shape. But I actually like the way this looks. So I'm going to take the exposure down just a little bit. And as you can see, simple as that, we've created a vignette. And you can increase or decrease the feathering of it. I'm going to leave it pretty close to 50%. And the cool thing about these filters is you can do anything you want with these filters. Any of these uh, sliders can be applied using this radial filter or any of these up here. Now, I think that looks pretty good. I am going to click out of this and I'm actually going to use the same filter we just used but for the horizon. Now what I want to do here is I want to increase the exposure of just part of the foreground, kind of give, give a sense that you're pushing into the image like the exposure is increasing as you go through the foreground and then also haze out sort of these really dark uh, Joshua tree in here. So the way I'm going to do that is use one more of these radio filters but I'm going to start on the horizon this time and rather than create a circle I'm going to create more of an oval shape that just covers the horizon. I want to increase the exposure in the foreground right but if I increase the exposure slider it's going to also increase the sky, it's going to increase the highlights but what we can do here is use the shadow slider and it won't increase the sky at all it will only increase this darker area on the horizon. So Let's go ahead and bring that up and as you can see here, it actually hasn't applied it to the horizon. It's applied it around the horizon because it thinks what we want to do is add some sort of vignette and affect what's outside of the circle. Now the way you can change this is, oh, you know, I'm affecting the wrong spot. There's an invert mask tab right here. You just click that and now it's affecting what's inside the circle, not what's outside the circle. So as you can see, if we go down to zero, that's what it looked like before. I want to bring this up. That's what it looks like now. And like I said before, I want to also decrease a little bit of the tonal contrast here. And how we decrease tonal contrast is using the clarity slider. But instead of bringing it up, we're going to bring it down. Now if we zoom in to 100%, we can kind of see I think this is where we started. Let's see kind of what we did there. So that's what we did, bringing up the shadows just in general and, and sort of creating a, just a little bit more haze on there. From here, I think this looks pretty good. I may do some subtle changes here. The cool thing is with these sliders, you can do anything you want and go back on your changes. You know, I mean, you don't have to fear going back in time because you have all your history here. You can go back to the start go back to where you were and any of these sliders can be changed we can get rid of any of these filters we applied 
I think what we're going to do now is use the brush adjustment tool. But what we're going to do here is only apply the brush adjustment to the Milky Way. I want to give just a little bit more contrast here and maybe a little bit of clarity. But the thing is, if I apply the clarity to the rest of the image, we're just going to get all those halos around the tonal contrast and it's going to make the foreground look strange, add noise in the foreground too. So what I want to do is just take this brush tool and we're just going to click and drag along the Milky Way. Simple as that. And what I'm going to do here, take the clarity and just bump that up a little bit. And as you can see, it's really brought out the Milky Way. It's really brought out the gases and the nebulosity. And we can even in increase the saturation there as well. The clarity may have added a little bit of noise. But the cool thing is we also have the noise adjustment here as well. So we can bring that up a touch too. If we zoom in and see kind of what we did, There's before and there's after, just adding really subtly that contrast. Now, I'm going to do one more filter. I'm going to use the simple gradient filter this time. I'm going to apply it just to the sky, add a little bit more contrast, and then I think I'm going to call it a day on this image. So go ahead and click here. Same as the radial filter. We are just going to click and drag where we want the gradient to appear. I'm going to want the gradient in the sky. So I'm going to click from the sky down into the foreground. I'm going to be pretty rough with it. And we are just going to increase this contrast slider. It also darkened the image just a touch. So I'm going to probably increase the exposure just a little bit. Not much, just enough. You can even take down the highlights a little bit more. Now, the one thing it did that I kind of didn't want it to do, but it did it anyways because we added contrast, is it made these Joshua Tree a little too dark on just the top of this gradient. We can just go ahead, bring the shadow slider up. As you can see, we've brought back a little bit of that detail in just the Joshua Tree. Go ahead and zoom in. And that looks pretty good. There's one thing here that I want to do because it looks like we have by by increasing the shadow slider we did create a little bit of haloing around the Joshua tree so what I want to do is go back on that gradient slider click on it let's see here bring down the shadows a little bit let's bring it down instead to 24 and there's still a little bit of haloing a way you can get rid of the haloing is just to decrease the clarity. But if we decrease the clarity here, we also get rid of all that awesome contrast we had in the Milky Way. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use just a brush tool. And I'm going to brush along the horizon, along this Joshua tree, and I'm going to decrease the clarity. I'm going to use anti-tonal contrast to get rid of a little bit of that haloing. Now let's make this brush a little smaller. We have the size over here. And let's just go ahead and brush along this horizon and along some of the Joshua tree. And I'm being pretty rough with it. And that's okay. For your own image, you might want to be a little more selective if you'd like. But I think this will work out great. And as you can see, if you decrease the clarity, you get rid of a lot of that tonal contrast. I'm going to decrease it. Let's do 55. Why not? Zoom in. See what we've done here. Maybe a little too much. So let's go back to that brush. Let's try negative 30. All right. I think that looks pretty good. For the amount we just did, I mean, let's go back to the let's go back to the beginning. I mean, this is what we started with. And just using a few tools and a little bit of time and patience in Lightroom. I think we've really taken this image and made it our own 
added really cool uh, mood to the image and and I think it's pretty awesome so yeah you know I mean everyone's different everyone has their own styles you may have processed the image a little differently maybe more or less or maybe you've changed the, you would have changed the colors in a different way but I really hope that this tutorial at least just gives you the tools to do what you'd like to do with your own images and uh, yeah I'll be doing some new tutorials probably some on creating panoramas with Lightroom and with Photoshop so thanks so much, guys. I really appreciate you watching.